Okay, so a week ago, I got a message on my first episode of the Super Mario Brothers uh, special recreation version on Super Mario Maker. Forty Blast created the whole v um, game in Super Mario Brothers special, as you already know if you've watched my part one, which is what's on screen right now. And um, it was the game was originally made by Hudson Soft for the PC. Um, CE88 and the Sharp X1 computers at the time, but Forte Blast, a user on Super Mario Maker for the Wii U, recreated the entire game in uh, Super Mario Maker for the, the whole world to enjoy, and it's kind of like an unofficial official version, because you, know, you have to pay for Super Mario Maker and want to play it, but I got a message a week ago from someone called Schengen Wii U, I guess that's how you pronounce it, and he announced that he has the game on NES, and I was like, do you mean you have the original Super Mario Brothers or Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels on NES, because you can you can get Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels ported from a Famicom disc to an NES cartridge simply by reproduction, similar to how I have Final Fantasy VII NES, which was a repurposed uh, Japanese, uh, Chinese uh, clone cartridge game that was originally made for a Chinese clone system, but it's been repurposed for normal, um, normal NES uh, things, uh, normal NES consoles. But then he said that he has all these games on NES, the original Super Mario Bros, of course, Super Mario Bros 2, which is the Lost Levels, not the actual Super Mario Bros 2, the Lost Levels version, on cartridge, as I've already mentioned, but he said he also has um, a homebrew port of Super Mario Bros Special. And I said, is it a repo or a ROM hack? I swear Super Mario Brothers Special was never fished, officially on the NES. And he did confirm it's a ho it's a repro slash homebrew, also known as a ROM hack, on an actual cartridge. I do have the official, well, I call it official because it was officially made, the Chinese Final Fantasy VII NES, but it has Lukia 2009's uh, edits to it. So technically it is a ROM hack as well on a cartridge, but it was originally an official version. And I'm talking about the says it's that one yeah and then I describe it then he's like you can get Mario Fantasy which is like an RPG game for NES so I'm guessing similar like Mario and Luigi games um, and he also has Super Mario Bros. Uh, 3 mix which is like Mario Bros. 3 but with redesigned stuff and also based off of NES remix or something like that and he also has that fabled Zelda Legend Link cartridge which is like expensive as hell to get reproductions of and yeah, even the Famicom cartridges are like the size of an NES cartridge, that's how big it is. And I have seen it, so I may, I may do that at some point. But then he, uh, then he says here that it's because it is hard to make, and then I have now posted, because I'm doing I'm here with this video of course, Hey man, I found the Super Mario Bros. Special NES version with a color palette with the Sharp X1 and physics retained, but all special items are replaced with the stationary 1-ups, because I've obviously tested it. You can actually choose your levels as well, so once again, it's, it's pretty on point. But like I said, it has the color palette of the Sharp X1, and it does have the same physics of the original versions of the game, so we're not playing with Super Mario Brothers physics like we did in Super Mario uh, Maker. Instead, we're actually playing with the suit with the Super Mario Brothers special original physics, because the jump arc's a bit weird, the running thing is a bit weird, the, the, like your momentum speed is kind of weird like that. But because he pointed out to me, thank you, Shingen Wii U, you have influenced a video to be created. Good sir. I applaud you, and because I'm nice, and because you pointed it out to me, I'm going to hit subscribe just because I'm a nice dude. Shout out to you, good sir. You've made a video on this channel. Hi, guys. Welcome. Scallon here. We are off for a bonus episode, as it were, of Super Mario Brothers Special. But not the recreated version. More like a home-crafted ROM hack port, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it's a ROM hack of the original Super Mario Brothers to literally replicate Super Mario Brothers Special to the best of the system's ability. No single-screen scrolling. It's actually scrolling properly, like it should. But the physics are the same as the original, as I've already mentioned at the beginning of this video, which was four minutes. Um, now, where's my controller? This is a little bit unprofessional, but way more professional than the others are made. Um, the total screen is definitely on point from the other versions of the... Of course, the, this version is reminiscent of the Sharp X1, even though um, there is no ROM hack representing the PC-88 graphics, and you can get a basic version 
that was probably the base, and that was, um, that just has the usual Super Mario Brothers physics and the Super Mario Brothers color scheme. But this is the, li this is the closest you're going to get to a recent version of Super Mario Brothers Special on an NES. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, the title screen is on point. This is the demo I'm just letting run. But there's a few bonuses as well. Just like the remade version on the um, on Super Mario Maker, of course, because you can choose every stage singly. If you press B, um, excuse me. If you press B, you can actually cycle through every level. And all 32 levels are accessible to you, which is very nice. As you can see, scrolling all the way through, 8-4, back to 1-1. And I'm going to go and jump in the game. Now, you may not see it from how I'm playing. That's loud in my ears. Oh, I'll have to turn that down in editing. But yeah, um, as you can see, one, as per usual, you can't go backwards. Now, it may not look it from playing, but if I just not hold B and try to move, you start off way slower than you normally do in the original Super Mario Brothers or the remake on Super Mario Omega. Your jump arc is a little bit, uh, well, your jump height is a little bit nerfed, and the thing is, you know that in the original Super Mario Brothers, you can, like, do a jump from a standstill, move slightly to the left, and then pull back to the right, for example? Well, if I try to do that from a standstill, it's very hard to do. And even if I was running and trying to do it, you continuously drift forward like you would in the PC-88 and Sharp X1 versions of the game, which are the official versions of said game. And because of that, the physics are pretty much on point of the original. It's exactly the same as the graphics. Exactly the same as the levels, block for block, with no modifications whatsoever. So really, this is actually more faithful than the Super Mario um, Brothers special recreation in Super Mario Maker. Since this is way more on point in terms of level is block for block with no modifications whatsoever. That took forever. See, that would not have taken me forever to reach. I mean, I could have done it from a standpoint like that, but I was trying to do the usual glitch that, well, not glitch, the usual jump trick that I can. But if you want to pull that off in this version, you've got to turn around first before you jump. And yes, you have got literally no time. I swear the timer goes down faster than it should. But there is one little spot I want to reach. Fireballs work as they should, so no worries there. I've got used to the uh, physics pretty quick, so I should be able to blast where I want to be well, before I run out of time so I can show off something. Because right over here is where we'd get the Hudson Bee, which is something I've never shown off in the uh, original. Where is the block? Where's the invisible coin block? Where's the invisible coin? There it is. Okay, it's in the middle of the bushes. Let me get back there. Okay, if it wasn't, I, I forgot to mention, if it isn't clear, I am actually playing this on the uh, FCUEX emulator 2.1.5. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to mention that the ROM hack itself was made by um, Muzarek, Mezex? I'll put it on screen, of course, like with the other episodes. So it's really hard to get on top of this block with a running start jump. You gotta, like, get it exactly, like, yeah. there we go. It's like, if you pull back, you get a bit of a higher jump. But you won't get the arc, which is so annoying, unless you get such a running start. There we go. You gotta like bounce off the wall while we're doing it. And I want to get on top of this block because this is where you get the Hudson B in the original. But unlike... Right, let me pause for a second. Unlike what you would get in the, obviously, the original versions being the PC-88 and the Sharp X1, which would get the Hudson B, which would give you 8,000 points, just like in Super Mario Maker version for the Wii U, the items had to be supplemented, but in this case, it's a st stationary 1-up, so I guess that's something, so you won't have to chase down the 1-up before you die, but because the jumping is so awkward, you probably wouldn't be able to grab it anyway. So it's a bit of an extra challenge if you want it, so that's fine. Um, just like in Super Mario Maker, as well as the original versions, when you're going into an underground level, you are able to move yourself in there. As you can see, I'm not on an autopilot kind of thing, and we do not have a time limit here, which is interesting. We have full control here. No, you can't enter that way. It's literally just a one-screen thing, and you have to enter yourself. But that's literally the only difference. But unlike the um, PC-88 and, Z and Sharp X1 versions, the timers... Oh, and Super Mario Maker's version, I guess. Time does tick, as it should when you're in that area, but because obviously this is the NES version, time isn't supposed to tick in that screen, 
the timer doesn't start until you actually enter the proper level. So, that's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, I'm just curious, what happens if I die here? Do I start back down here, or do I start back outside like I should? I'm curious about that because of the timer and whatnot. Oh, you just start immediately in the level. Okay, so they must have programmed like a checkpoint thing or something. If this was the, the original Super Mario Brothers, like entirety, well, you would have to walk through the pipe again. But because that ain't a cutscene, I guess that's why they don't let you do that again. They look weird. <laughs> that's because of the color palette of the original game. No shimmers. That makes sense. The I pressed jump. That was the bloody physics. But yeah, um. Not really much to show here, but I do want to show off one more item, so let me just commit suicide here so I can use the uh, level skip trick. Oh, it's not really a trick, it's just something that's implemented into the game for convenience, because, you know, obviously um, you have to cheat for lives, of course. Let me mash B here. I want to go to 3-4. I'm going to blast through this. Check me out. I say that, watch me fail. Doesn't help if the game lags a little. Oh, the bloody... I forget they're there every goddamn time. <laughs> what the hell is the matter with me? But yeah. Thanks, uh, choosing Wii U for pointing this out to me so I can actually cover this as a bonus episode. There we go. Avoid those visible coin blocks. Jump over that. Barrels and other special enemies have had to be supplemented just like in the Wii U recreation, recreated version. And the hammer is once again just a very weirdly coloured one-up. I don't know if every item has its own different palette, but it's like if you find the hidden secrets, you get a different coloured one-up that does not leave its spot. And somehow I clipped into that block. What the hell? <laughs> I was trying to jump up there. Let me see if I can get back there. That was interesting. What the hell? Why did I jump through the block? I was trying to get up. Yeah, jump to the final block, then we won't get hit. There we go. Jump now. There we go. That'll do. Get up there! Oh, uh, no, it's doing a visible coin block. I'm not too sure if that was there in the PC 88 and X1 versions, but it's definitely there in both the, um... Damn it. <laughs> it's definitely there in both the Super Mario Maker ver uh, Wii U version and, uh, well, obviously NES version, which is what I'm playing. This must be the homebrew that, uh, using Wii U talked about, so that's pretty sweet. Uh, I think that's just a mushroom, actually, in that block, so I'm going to ignore that. Whoa! I clipped through side of the blocks. <laughs> I am not used to the physics. <laughs> I am not used to the physics. It is definitely different than the original Super Mario Brothers, just like Super Mario Brothers Special should be. But if you find Super Mario Brothers Special on NES too hard, despite having the screen scrolling, because everything's obviously moving, um, then you may want to play the Super Mario Maker version because obviously you have infinite lives, you can choose whatever your level you want, and it uses the original Super Mario Brothers for NES physics instead of its own physics. But if you want to play it faithfully, of course play the originals, but if you haven't got that and you want something special to show off to your folks, if the originals aren't good enough for you anyway, or if you just want the screen to scroll, then obviously get the NES version. Of course you can get it on emulator, but you know, Having it on a, um, repro isn't too bad, so with this music playing, I guess, um, that will probably be the only bonus video I will be making for this series, because obviously the two versions I can't cover unless I got emulators for them, and this was more unique. But because I was, this has been brought to light, I can now add NES to the list of consoles that you can play this on, because... Yeah, this is readily available, so I'll see you guys in the next episode, and I hope you enjoyed this bonus episode. And you won't have to worry about the checksum failure for the final level as well. <laughs>